the extraction genre was supposed to be the next big thing in gaming. So why have so many failed? It's been over a year since I've reviewed the extraction game genre landscape, and a lot has happened. And given that the majority of the games I listed at the time are either dead or dying by this point, that's probably an understatement. Well, let's talk about it. There's a lot to cover, so I've broken this down into sections so you can either watch the whole thing or skip to the parts that you're most interested in. We're going to roughly go over what exactly is an extraction game, the current state of the extraction game genre, some misconceptions that I've seen circulating, some notable options you have to play both now and upcoming playtests. While I do consider myself pretty knowledgeable on the topic, I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. This video is just my opinion. Feel free to add to the conversation down in the comments, sub, or join the Discord down below. With that out of the way, let's get started. What exactly is an extraction game? So for starters, the, my original video on the subject was a bit of a reaction to the consistent pushback argument of there are too many extraction games. This came to a head when Arc Raiders made the announcement that it would be shifting away from a strictly co-op PvE game to an extraction shooter. The salt that flowed out from its subreddit is still visible over two years later. Now, at the time, so many extraction shooters had been announced, and on the surface, you could make that statement with some degree of accuracy, but it required a little bit of ignorance on the situation. For those of us who actually play extraction games, we know that wasn't true then, and it's not really true now, but I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a ton of misconception on what an extract game is. One of the biggest reasons is the name of the genre. It overly simplifies the genre by implying any game with an extract mechanic belongs in the category. This has fooled dev teams, players, and content creators alike, to the point where in some circles, games like Deep Rock Galactic and Helldivers 2 have been put into this category. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds, these aren't without merit but miss the mark in critical ways. So here's a very brief but precise definition of an extraction game and it comes down to three key features, extraction, loot loss, and loot economy. First and foremost, there needs to be an extract mechanic, but that in and of itself implies some things. For starters, this distinguishes the genre from survival games. Extracting removes you from danger. Your loot and your progress are not at risk unless you are in-game and generally in a raid. Which leads to the next two features. Loot and loss of loot on death. When in a raid, you lose all of the gear you have on you on death. This includes gear you've brought with you. And this is the most notable difference between an extraction genre and other genres that are close to it. Some games have you only lose what you've acquired in the current play session. Sea of Thieves, Deep Rock Galactic, and Helldivers 2 are popular examples. That distinction makes all the difference. It means that you're able to go negative during a raid as opposed to only being prevented from progressing. The additional factor is how loot plays into the economy between raids. Unlike a battle royale, you generally pick your loadout prior to you going into a raid a loadout which is determined by your progress and your previous success, or lack thereof. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into why this is affecting the current state of the extraction shooter space. These features can vary in their intensity, however, the removal or the severe reduction of said features can drastically change the way the game plays out to the point where it no longer belonging to the genre. Now you may be asking yourself, how does reducing the intensity of a feature change the genre of a game? Two examples I'd like to point out are DMZ and Hazard Zone. Both had no real economy out of the raid. This removes the risk factor that the genre needs and relies on. Hazard Zone died because of it and in my opinion has resulted in DMZ not garnering enough players to receive the continuous support. It's being allowed to die on the vine, but let's be honest, if it weren't for the fact that the publisher is massive, it would have announced a shutdown by now. I dive into more detail about that in this video linked above. One of the reasons the market seemed like it was going to be flush with options is because so many games were marketing themselves as extract shooters. However, the reality was they were just games that had extract mechanics but were part of other genres. The two examples I can give that can best illustrate this are Hawked and Ascendant. Nothing will stop devs and content creators from labeling titles whatever they want, but it will ensure that people looking for the experience of what this genre entails won't find it and likely not stick around to keep playing the game. 
So we can see how lots of games could inflate the number of extract games available. You have examples like Hawked, Hyena, Ascendant, Steel Hunters, etc. They are entirely different genres, but happen to have an extract mechanic. This has resulted in many overinflated lists, and to anyone not really playing extract games, it's understandable to make the claim that there's too many. Now even with all this in mind, I want to show you the list of extract games that I compiled that fit the description I've laid out. Now this may seem like an impressive list, but first, let's remove the games that are already dead or cancelled. Then the games that are out, but look like they're going to die imminently. Then games that are so far out in development, they really don't constitute as a real option as of right now. And as you can see, this cuts down the list pretty considerably. And again, if you're not in the extraction space, you could be looking at this and consider this is a lot of options. However, let me try to articulate why this isn't the case in a streamlined way. Right now, there are two points of extremes that can be best symbolized with Escape from Tarkov and Hunt Showdown. Escape from Tarkov is a hyper-realistic milsim shooter and all of the complexity that comes with that, that has loot-based objectives, individual traders, and a pretty deep loot loss acquisition pool. Hunt, by contrast, is a map-based objective extraction shooter, an in-depth PvE, a simple but streamlined health and gameplay loop with a pretty forgiving loot loss and acquisition pool. In my mind, both of these games sit at polar opposites within the extraction space. And while there are some other options readily available, they are far too much like Escape from Tarkov to constitute a viable middle option. More on the specifics later. There used to be a middle ground with the Psycho Frontier, but that game's shutdown has left a huge gap in what I believe in an underserved market. Fortunately, there are some options looming in the distance that look to be aiming for this space. But as we've seen in the last year or so, be it with tacking on an extract feature or cancellations, development of such titles can be a bunch of smoke and mirrors. So what options does that leave us now and in the very near future? Let's start with the two ends of the spectrum and then in as logical order as I can manage with everything in between. First, let's start off with the elephant in the room, Escape from Tarkov. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're familiar enough with it. With a considerable lead in terms of development time, it has a ton of content to explore. For better or for worse, it still remains the bar all extract shooters are judged by. I think this is rather unfortunate and has led many developers astray with design decisions. I went into depth as to why in my Grey Zone Warfare comparison video linked above. The three other games that are the closest comparison are Arena Breakout Infinite, Red River Incursion, and Grey Zone Warfare. They are pretty close overall, but they do differ in some key ways. Grey Zone Warfare has a unique gameplay loop for an extraction shooter. For starters, instead of having several maps, you are on one large map where you never really leave. While normally this would not make it an extract shooter, your base camp is, by all intents and purposes, a safe haven. Effectively, an extract. Second, the PvE in the game is robust and can be quite challenging. You can also play strictly co-op mode, making you immune to friendly fire and PvP damage. This is a departure from the majority of extraction shooters where PvP is the driving threat that you face. While it is not all bad, many of the pitfalls of such an approach can be seen in the game and are articulated in the negative Steam reviews. I can say though, that if you were looking for an extraction shooter with an immersive milsim experience to co-op with friends, you're not really going to find much better as of right now. On that note, Red River Incursion has been dubbed the PvE Tarkov, so if you were looking for something like that, that would be an option. However, it is very early in development, not much content, and with Tarkov finally adding a PvE mode, I'm not sure this game will have enough demand to sustain any traction. Time will tell. And finally, Arena Breakout Infinite. This is the only title in the Milsim group that is free to play. While it lacks the sheer content load that Tarkov has, it has considerable improvements on the quality of life features. It's also the only one with friendly teammate indicators. All of this makes it one of the best options if a realistic milsim extraction shooter is something you're looking for. Now, it did cause a lot of controversy with its monetization method. Speaking plainly, it has pay to win mechanics. However, Grey Zone Warfare and Escape from Tarkov both offer monetization on similar mechanics and have received minimal scrutiny by comparison. Something I dive into in this video linked above. Bottom line, if you're curious about this type of game, ABI is easily the most user friendly. Now I know I just listed 4 games and that might give the illusion of 4 options, but these games are all so similar that if you're not into milsim style games, there's a good chance none of these will be a good fit. And if you are, it really will feel like splitting hairs between them. Now to completely shift gears, there's Hunt Showdown. 
This game takes a completely different approach to the extraction shooter formula. While others on this list opt for a more loot-based raid incentive, Hunt is more map objective based. A bounty attached to a boss that must be found and defeated to collect reward is the main driving factor. When compared to Escape from Tarkov, the economy is much more forgiving and shallow. But this isn't necessarily a negative. That translates in a much smaller gap between the lowest tier kits and the highest in terms of effectiveness and being able to reacquire after a loss. This economic setup is about as forgiving as it can get before you lose all sense of tension. The examples I gave earlier showed what happened when you try to lower it or completely remove it. Hunt Showdown has friendly indicators, pings, and a very accurate skill-based matchmaking system, which makes it extremely approachable. Okay, with the opposite ends of the space more or less defined, let's talk about the potential middle ground. Delta Force is set to release in early 2025. Having had a chance to play the alpha earlier this year, I got a good feel for the direction the design is headed. And I'm speaking strictly about its extraction mode. It is effectively a balance of Tarkov and Call of Duty, having just enough complexity, loot, and loot value to capture the intention of longtime extraction shooter fans, but also having a ton of user-friendly features that will be sure to capture the attention of players who are fans of more mainstream titles. It's going to be free to play and happens to be a mode within the game. The other modes are more closely resembling traditional shooters. This during a time where the influence of the bigger titles are waning and their audience retention is vulnerable. Converting these traditional players into extraction shooter players, even if only partially, it will be much easier task than if the extraction portion was the only thing Delta Force had to offer. In my opinion, the combination of all these factors will lead Delta Force to be one of the most dominant extraction shooters, eventually eclipsing Tarkov in the years to come. Provided, of course, that the devs don't botch the launch. Time will tell. Arc Raiders, by comparison, has a much smaller profile. It's also slated to release in early 2025, and as of right now, has playtests scheduled for late October of this year. Having played the alpha last year with an NDA, what I can say is that my enthusiasm for this game has not diminished one bit since then, and will likely fall within the middle ground of the extraction shooter space. My only concern is that as of the latest news, it will have a $40 buy-in, which will limit its exposure to potential players and thus its potential growth. If there's no NDA for the test, I will happily report more on the game once I can. Next is Level Zero Extraction. Now, I've done a couple of videos on this game. The latest Early Access review is linked above. Since then, they've had their first wipe, have had many changes, and have had horrible player numbers. The changes are best described as one step forward, two steps back. One of the biggest changes that I've never really thought I'd see is that they removed the nail gun as the starting weapon and replaced it with a pistol. This is a gigantic leap forward to be sure, but a few changes like having you drop your equipped item when you're hitting an alien trap and limiting your ability to add additional flares and glow sticks to your loadout make it clear they're trying to keep the alien relevant in the fight without directly buffing the alien. This tells me they still have failed to recognize that the alien is a net negative to the game. Players want guns. They made sure to put guns in the hands of players. Great. But people also want gun fights. Having the most persistent threat be something that you're not excited to fight while also gimping your ability to fight it is not a good experience. And then for the players currently playing and they're about to tell me, but the alien is the main draw of the game. Frankly, the Steam charts speak for itself. While I'm clearly not recommending this game, its structure puts it firmly in the middle ground of the extraction shooter pool. While not a dead game, within the next quarter we'll see if the devs can write this course or if, if the market competition will be too stiff by then. Now on to Dungeon Morn and Dark and Darker. From the outside looking in, these two games are impossible to distinguish from one another. Both have classes, but you could say Dungeon Morn's class abilities are more potent. Both are a niche type game within a niche type genre which will make their appeal pretty limited, which makes them really hard to nail down in our extraction shooter scale here. The best approximation I have is that they will be in the middle ground. Dungeonborn is entirely free, and Dark and Darker has a free version with so many features lacking that it plays mostly like a demo. So if you're curious on whether you'll like this type of game, Dungeonborn will be the best one to try first, and if you're interested in that one, I highly recommend you trying the Dark and Darker as well. From there, you'll figure out which one suits you better. Now on to a couple of honorable mentions. First is EVE Online Vanguard. You can play it on their tests that they have going on pretty regularly. I made an initial review of their alpha linked above for a breakdown of what it looks like. You do need their version of a premium account in order to play, so it's effectively a paid demo at the moment. I'll be happy to try the game again once more significant additions have been made. So that pretty much wraps up all of the currently playable and soon to be playable extraction shooters that aren't effectively dead games walking. 
I know, I know. You're probably thinking that games like Vigor, Twisted Past the Renown, and Marauders have better or similar numbers to level 0 extraction. The key differences are that these games have either been struggling for way longer or are on much shakier ground with regards to long-term support. There are other games out there that are in development, but as the last year has shown us, a lot can happen that can prevent games from making it to release, much less succeeding as making a viable extraction shooter experience. So until we get more solid info on these titles, I'm going to hold off on taking them seriously as an option. So which upcoming titles are you most excited about? Put your answers down below in the comments, like this video, subscribe for more content, discord links down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and good hunting. Oh.